Squad and welcome to Big Dig with John. Today I'm going to be looking at thermal expansion. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make new alloys as well as how to make really cool machines that will allow you to make um, like redstone conduits and stuff like that. Uh, so without any uh, more rambling on, let's get straight into it. Okay, the first thing you're going to make is I think it's the machine block. Uh, the machine block you need uh, iron in all the corners, gold in the center, and four glass. So I'll show you how to make it. Now this is what you you need this for pretty much any machine uh, in thermal expansion, uh, as well as uh, what you're making it at this moment in time is for the pulverizer. So iron in all the four corners, um, gold in the center, and to either side of the gold put glass. Make sure machine frame, not machine block. Sorry. Okay, so that makes your machine frame. Now, you're going to want redstone conduits. Uh, redstone conduits are made um, by uh, redstone uh, diagonal to a piece of gold. So I'll show you how to make it. I think it's redstone conduits. Uh, so, redstone, so put gold in the center and then uh, to the top. Uh, right, put redstone, and to the bottom left, put redstone, make sure, redstone reception coil, sorry. Wow, I can't remember any names. Uh, <laughs> so now that you've made the, you've made your machine frame, and your redstone reception coil, you can now, um, make the pulverizer. The pulverizer requires two flint, two copper, and a piston, as well as the two items you've just crafted. So, uh, put your piston at the top, Center uh, to the in the middle uh, left and right uh, Put flint to the bottom left and right put copper and then I think it's in the center put Yeah in the center put the machine frame and at the bottom center uh, Put the redstone reception coil makes your pulverizer now I'll place it over here your pulverizer does actually require power to work and since you don't have any way of power in it yet because uh, I haven't actually taught you how to make power or anything. Um, you're going to need to make some way of powering it. So the best way to power it straight away is a sterling engine. To make a sterling engine, you just need cobblestone, stone gears, and a piston. Uh, stone gears are made with sticks as well as cobblestone. Uh, you right click. That is how you make stone gear, and that is how you make the wooden gear uh, that you need for a stone gear. So at the bottom, left and right, put the stone gears. In the bottom center, put the piston. In the at, in the center of the crafting table, put a piece of glass. And on the top row, put three cobblestone. Make sure sterling engine. Now, uh, this is what you're going to use to power your machines. Okay. So how you work out which is powered? Because at the moment it's powering the input. Uh, no, the output. Sorry. So what you do is uh, which one is this? It's configuration. Okay, so yellow is what you output. Uh, no, sorry. Um, red is what you output. Blue is input, and um, yellow is like the extra material. So, for example, if you pulverize, let's say, um, uh, what is it, iron, uh, you have obviously a hundred percent chance of getting pulverized to pulverized iron. Uh, but then you, you'll also have a 10% chance of getting uh, ferrous, uh, pulverized ferrous. Now that pulverized ferrous metal will go in the yellow section, but the normal stuff will go in the red. Uh, power can be either side actually, I'm sure it can, or the bottom. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just change the configuration around, uh, just think of this as a box. So that's obviously the left side, that's the right side, that's the bottom, that's the back, and that is the top. So you can click these to change them around. Uh, so that's what you do. So now that I showed you how the, all the machines work, because that uh, that is a good way of configuring it. So you'd go into the settings and you'd configure it to the which way you'd like stuff to be pumped in and out. But we're not going to worry about automating these machines yet. We're actually just going to get them. Um, so as long as there's power going to, into the machine, it doesn't really matter. So now you've got your pulverizer, you're going to wonder what you need to do. Well, you're going to need a smelter as well, uh, to smelt these ores. So, to make the uh, power furnace, uh, you're going to need uh, bricks and redstone. So, I'll show you how to make these. 
Uh, so brick in the center, left and right. Bottom, left and right, put copper. Uh, in the middle, put the machine frame. To the top, put redstone. And to the bottom, put the redstone reception coil. Make sure powered furnace. Now, I'm not going to put these too close together because um, I don't want to. Uh, it doesn't really matter at the time because I'm not actually pumping out in now. So, why did you make these two machines first? Well, to make the rest of the machines, you're going to need weird components, such as Invar. To make Invar, you need uh, pulverized, you, you make it with pulverized ferrous and pulverized metal. And well, if you haven't pulverized it, you can't get it, can you? So, that's the reason why you have a pulverizer. So you can break down ferrous, which is uh, usually commonly found near iron. Uh, not iron, uh, near lead. Uh, it's very rare though, I've got to admit. So it's better, what I suggest is to get a large quantity of ferris. This is how I did it earlier on um, in like a, a on my own before I show you the video. Uh, what I did is put back, try and get a stack of iron. I mean, it's, I know it's a bit of a uh, annoying. Uh, get a stack of iron and usually you'll get about 10 ferris when you uh, pulverize it. So you then you can obviously get ferris um, metal and ferris uh, dust. So I'm just gonna uh, quickly get some coal. So I'm going to be right back so that I can power these machines and show you what... Actually, I have already done it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, sorry. So what you would do... Um, so what... If... Ooh, why, did I say, why am I going really, really slow? Um, so what you would do uh, if in normal circumstances... You'd get your ferrous metal. You'd uh, get some uh, iron. Um, or, or just iron ingots. And what you do is in your steel engine, you'd put coal. This coal, and you'd use a lever as well. So, I'm not going to show you because uh, it'll just waste a lot of time. So what you do is you turn the machine on, uh, the, the, uh, the stilling engine on. The stilling engine will start pumping as long as it's got coal in. This will power this machine, and then it will pulverize any um, ferris, met, uh, ferris star into two ferris metal dust, and any iron into two iron. Now you need ferris and iron in a crafting table. Uh, so, two pulverized iron with a pulverized ferris makes three um, invar blend. Now, invar blend basically is invar ingots. So then, what you do is you just uh, mine this. Uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, you'd. Oop, why can I not press? You'd mine that way and simply just place it next to this machine. Oh, well. Uh, oop. You basically just place it next to your other machine, and you would uh, do the same. You stick a lever, you'd move your lever over here, put coal in, power it up, and you'd power your furnace. So this is best. This is the basic way of uh, any uh, supplying energy. This is the cheapest way because obviously you don't have to make two stirring engines. It's not a lot of resources used, but I guess uh, sometimes you don't want to waste stuff because you're not going to use your stirring engine in the future. Uh, you're going to use magmatic engines, but I'm going to show you that in another episode. So what you do is, once you've got the pulverized dusts, and you've turned it into invar blend, you simply just place it in there, the power the furnace with uh, coal in your stealing engine, turn the stealing engine on, and it will power the furnace. And it will become invar. Okay, so once you have your two invar, you can then make, um, it's, I think it's the induction smelter. So I'll show you how to make it. Um, hopefully it's the induction smelter. So what you do is in the center um, row, uh, to the left and right, you'd put your invar ingots. In the center, you would put your machine frame. To the top middle, you'd put a bucket. To the bottom middle, you'd put your redstone reception coil. And then to the left and right of the reception coil, you would put copper. Make sure induction smelter. Now, an induction smelter is a lot different to a fern uh, to the powered furnace. Why? Because uh, this um, just basically um, creates. Um, it just basically is a smelter. It's just basically a, a furnace that's powered, so you don't have to use coal. Whereas an induction smelter is like um, an alloy maker. So you'd put two special ores in, so um, two certain items in, and it will smelt them both together into something new. Um, so what you do now is. What you're gonna want to make next? So before I actually show you how these before before I actually show you how all these machines work and stuff, I'm gonna make carry on making the machines. 
So the next thing I'm going to make is, I think it's a magma crucible. Now the magma crucible, uh, so it needs uh, two nether brick uh, in the center, left and right. In the actual middle of the crafting bench, put your machine frame to the top uh, center, put a bucket to the left and right of the bottom row, uh, put copper, and in the bottom um, center, put a redstone reception coil. Makes your magma crucible. Now, what your magma crucible does is basically melts down um, either um, it melts down redstone or um, ender eyes, ender pearl, sorry, into a liquid form. Uh, that's basically what it does. Uh, this redstone liquid is then pumped into um, redstone reception coils in a liquid transposer, which I'm going to show you now. And then you can make the redstone redstone reception coils, which is basically an amazing way of powering uh, and basically transporting energy around. So in the top center, like before, put a, uh, a bucket in the middle of the crafting table, put a machine frame to the bottom center, put a rece red rece uh, redstone reception coil. To the left and right of the reception coil, put copper, and to the left and right of the machine frame, put glass. Make sure liquid transposer. Now, like I said, liquid transposer basically uh, turns your redstone into um, uh, it turns your redstone liquid into what is it? Uh, reception coils. Now, I think if you place these next to each other, the machine. So, the best way to set this up is put the machines next to each other, and then any redstone liquid will go straight into here. Now, I'm gonna quickly. Uh, uh, get some power so that I can show you how this works because you need all these machines to begin with but I haven't actually got any coal and I'm going to make a few more uh, steel and engine so that you can understand um, how all these machines work and why you need these five machines in the first place so I'm going to be right back so once you've pulverized your two obsidian in the pulverizer and you've smelted one iron, one lead ingot in the power furnace because obviously Tinker's construct uh, lead doesn't work in it. Um, so once you've smelted one lead in the iron furnace, you can then put one lead and two obsidian um, pulverized obsidian into that to get two hardened glass. Uh, now, what you use hardened glass for is uh, you use it to make empty like liquid conduits. So how you make what you're gonna also gonna need is Electrum. To make electrum, you put an iron, a silver ingot, and a gold ingot, and then these will make two um, uh, electrum ingots. Now, once you've got your electrum ingots and your hardened glass, basically you put hardened glass in the center and put left and right of it an electrum ingot, gets you energy conduits empty. So, now what you do is you would put some redstone in your magma crucible. Because these two are next to each other, the redstone won't fill up in here. It will go directly into the liquid transposer. And then in the top of the liquid transposer, in the blue section, you will put your empty conduits. Now, for every 200 uh, milligram, uh, 200 like milliliters, or whatever you want to call it, of liquid redstone, you will get um, a liquid a redstone energy conduit. So, um, redstone, uh, once it's melted down into a liquid, is the equivalent, is the equivalent of a hundred. So basically, for every one of them, you just need two um, redstone. So two redstone becomes two hundred um, liquid redstone, and then it will go in. Simple as. Uh, so that's it for this episode. I showed you how to make redstone conduits. What you do with these is you basically hook them up. So uh, they're basically like wires. You'd hook them up to these. So um, you'd hook them up to like, I'll show you. You basically hook them up for power. So if I had um, this over here, uh, I would might put them like that and then uh, hook it up like this. And then it'll power it if it's the right way round. Crap. Uh, you do. I think you use a special wrench to make, I know it doesn't, automatically corrects itself. Uh, now you, you'd need um, a special wrench to change this uh, the right way, so that it's pumping in. But for now, um, I think uh, I'm not actually going to use them. 
Uh, but I'll be showing you in the next episode how you can actually make power with them. Because for now, they're just wires. Uh, let's see if it actually still works. It might not. Uh, will it? Will it produce power? Is this going up at all? Ah, well, it's full up for power anyway. Crap. So it's hard to tell. Um, but usually, you'd have to have one uh, of these saying input and one saying output. And they look to me like they're both saying output, which is bad. Um, so, next episode, I'll be showing you... Um, how to actually use these redstone conduits in an actual system. But for now, they're just there as basically decoration, it looks like. Because they're not actually working. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for watching. I should probably let know. I'm going to actually show you how to use a wrench because it's pointless actually having um, the redstone conduits. Uh, so, I'll be right back. Now that you've created uh, enough redstone conduits, so what you do is. You just uh, copy what I did earlier, uh, meaning um, uh, just make some more conduits so that you've got enough to make some sort of uh, energy system. So now I've put all these machines next to each other over here and they're connected up with conduits. What you need to do is you need to make a crescent hammer. How you make a crescent hammer is you need three iron and one silver. So put your silver in the center. In the bottom middle, put an iron ingot, and in the top, uh, left and right hand corners, uh, put iron as well. Make sure crescent hammer. Now, a crescent hammer is basically the wrench of, um, what's it called? The, it's basically a wrench of uh, fermionic expansion, uh, expansion, thermal expansion, sorry. Now, what your wrench does is obviously, it does exactly what another wrench, any other wrench does. It rotates it, so make sure that... Uh, your power, uh, whatever is pumping into these tubes uh, and producing your power, is facing actually the tube. Now, if you right click on where this, um, anything that connects to the redstone uh, conduit, will get um, some sort of um, symbol. It's either will be blue or orange, uh, connecting it. Now, orange means uh, output, blue means input. So, um, if uh, this was blue, so that should be output. Um, uh, these, if it's blue, then it will receive power. If it's orange, it will uh, it won't receive power. Um, so these machines don't need power, so they're not going to receive any power and waste any power. Uh, for example, if you watch this, this is currently going up the redstone co um, crucible because it is blue, because that is the input. If I change that to output. All the power will be sucked out of the machine. Uh, well, not be sucked out of the machine. It'll be used up uh, because nothing's actually um, going in. Uh, because not that uh, because the machine's not actually working. It's not actually going to be. It's not actually being used up. So uh, currently, uh, because it's input, more power is being produced, uh, being put into it. Because now it's output, obviously no power is going into it. So the only oops, the only reason why that would actually be a big deal is if you wanted to make sure that only certain machines got power or if you wanted to make sure that no power was wasted going into your power creators so you wouldn't want um, like these steel engines to be blue because then they'll start retrie uh, receiving power and it might actually get wasted so that's it for this episode I've showed you how uh, redstone conduits work and how to actually make them I've showed you how um, to set it up so uh, this system now all has redstone um, conduits connected up uh, just remember, blue is input, um, and orange, oh my god, I've done this twice now, and orange is output. So, uh, blue is for machines that want power, and orange is for machines that produce power. Uh, so that's it for this episode, thanks for watching, hit like and favourite if you enjoyed this, hit subscribe if you want to see more content from me, uh, and comment if you want to see anything in particular. Uh, on Big Dig. There is many things and uh, for those of you who don't know lots of the mods on Big Dig are a bit outdated so uh, it is difficult to find actually things to help you with. Uh, so hopefully this video has helped. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!